Welcome back, my fellow duplicates, to Oxygen Not Included. In today's episode, we're going to be doing an experiment, as reminded to me by Yako here. He says, you spoke about turning fertilizer into sand. Didn't know it was possible stuff, but he's asking because he currently has a base that is, you know, fairly sustainable. The problem is he has a lot of polluted water and he just wants to get it back to clean water without doing a lot of hassle. So you need sand. Well, how do you get more sand? So that is today's experiment. How I'm going to be achieving this is we're going to be using magma. Now this is only possible in sort of the latest update of the game because we're using naphtha here, or I like to call it naphtha, but I guess <laughs> if it sounds different to you, whatever, I'm gonna mess it up a bunch of times. But naphtha here is plastic melted down. So you, once you get it over 70 degrees Celsius or 76.9 degrees Celsius, it'll turn into this liquid. And we've used this to create uh, airlocks previously because it builds vertically instead of flowing out to the side like normal liquids do. Uh, now that may or may not remain. Ultimately though, its properties are pretty significant in that they can actually remain here. And this is also possible for oil as well. So we don't necessarily need naphtha here, but it, I'm just using it. Um, this lock right here, you can see my setup. I have hydrogen on the left for the, its thermal conductivity. Uh, if we had helium available, helium would be a better gas for this, but we're gonna have to roll with hydrogen because that's what we can actually use. To the right here, I have a vacuum, and then I just have a simple water lock with extra water. You're not going to be coming into this space unless you are inside of an exosuit because you will become, you know, your duplicates will be injured because of the amount of heat that's going to end up over here. The key thing here is a bottle emptier, and this bottle emptier is made of abyssalite. Now, I haven't set up the rest of this quite yet, but I do have it started. So down here at the bottom, way, way, way down in your base. There are large pockets of magma. And now magma is ridiculously hot. Look at the temperature here as I'm hovering over this. 1,588 degrees Celsius. Well, that's hot. That's real hot. However, you can see what I've done here as I've dug down and I've made a ladder. Admittedly, I've, I've used the cell painter to kind of cheat and debug mode and all that fun stuff. But uh, I've made this cell, this work cell over here on the left, which it should be possible to hopefully uh, keep this in a, a vacuum state or flood it again with something like crude oil or something like that, just so that the heat doesn't really escape here. Because if your magma becomes a solid, which will be igneous rock, then you can't necessarily pump it out. And pumping it out is going to be exactly what you want to use. So you're going to need to make a pitcher pump out of abyssalite. Now, if we can do this, and if you can set this up correctly inside of your base, which it should be possible, especially over here, where there's just loads and loads of magma, you should be able to set up an auto bottling cycle that will deliver liquid magma from down here all the way up into you know, your bottle emptier, which is way up here. Now, I have a ladder chamber right now that is filled with chlorine. The thought is that this bottle or this liquid that is moving with your duplicate may worm up and turn into a rock while they're carrying it. I don't know if this is going to happen or not, but that's part of today's experiment to see just what it, it might take in order to actually make this possible. So let's just run in through the motions here and see what happens. So I'm going to set this liquid up here. As you can see here, I have magma selected. I'm going to enable auto bottling, set this up at a high priority, and I'll do the other step that I need to do within this cycle, and that is dig out some of this abyssalite. Now next to this is neutronium, and you cannot dig neutronium because it's not going to be excavated by any duplicate mining tool. So you have to keep in mind of what you can and cannot mine down here. Now I guess diamond, it's very difficult, but you can get through it, so whatever. That's cool. I don't know what we can do with diamond just yet, but one day. One day we're going to make use of diamond, but not today. Back on the point, though, is let's dig this piece up. There we go. A little bit of magma has found its way in. If we dig it up a little bit more, there we go. Now we, are, we have some magma that we can come down here and we can pump up. So what I should be seeing is a duplicate make its way, make their way down here. Somebody do it. All right, so I found the problem. There was too much water down here, and therefore they wouldn't navigate beyond this point, or they didn't understand that they could navigate beyond that point. So Mima is now running back, 
and if I I don't see I can't select the liquid I guess there it is magma but we can see that the temperature here is dropping while she is running with it so it might be in our best interest uh, no she dropped it well she got it back <laughs> <laughs> it was a little bit roundabout, but now now you can see the bottle emptier over here is emptying out the magma. However, the magma is actually igneous rock at this point. It's it's cooled enough to the point where it's coming out as a rock. If I slow this down just a little bit, you can kind of see what's happening. Matter of fact, if I move this to the next spot and just start it up again. You can see that rock is just coming out. However, this rock is still giving off a lot of heat and therefore heating up the hydrogen very, very quickly. So even though there isn't a pool of magma down here, um, we're still getting lots and lots of heat. If anything, that's actually a little bit better than having a giant pool of magma down here because when magma cools down, it then becomes something that you have to dig. And when you have to dig it, you lose a bunch of that mass. However, in this method, going from a liquid to a solid, I was able to move that entire mass without any loss. So I don't know, there's something to that. Okay, so one observation I have right now is that the total mass inside of here is not very high considering how much gas and other materials I have. Now all of this is abyssalite inside of here, so it's not really absorbing any heat energy. But the naphtha over here is 740 kilograms so the temperature that it's going up is taking a little bit longer now it's not giving off any heat because right next to it is a vacuum so it's not transferring any you know heat energy over there and this is 9.5 degrees celsius or whatever so this isn't warming up either it's, it looks like a little bit of heat kind of gets transferred when a duplicate runs through it but not for very long it'll take several trips is what i'm trying to say for this to actually heat up in space, you know, heat the space up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna add a second bottle emptier. So that way we have two areas where heat is being transferred and twice as much that we can move per cycle. All right, so now for the fun part. I have some fertilizer over here and this is under the agricultural tab for the uh, storage compactor. So if I, I go over here and I click on fertilizer, set this to a decent priority. We'll have a, a duplicate run inside of here. So Mima's going to drop this off and watch what happens. Now we learned that in one of my previous videos on the Megabase Challenge that the contents inside of the storage compactor is exposed to the gas around it, hence why we have hydrogen. Currently it's at negative 26.7 degrees Celsius, but watch this. As it heats up, this fertilizer will reach its melting point. Okay, so watch closely here at the fertilizer. Right there. It's coming up on 125 degrees Celsius. And boom! We now have dirt. Now dirt has a melting point of 326 degrees Celsius. And at that point, guess what's going to happen? So that other material I have is phosphorite. I noticed it had a melting temperature of about 250 degrees Celsius. So I'm wondering what it's going to turn into. I've never, I've never warmed that up hot, hot enough to actually convert. So let's see what happens here. Doo -doo -doo. Whoa! It's phosphorus liquid and it's light emitter. Oh, come on. It's not lit up. Lame. Okay, so it's specific heat properties here are 0.76. Thermal conductivity of 0.2. Hmm, okay. It'll turn into a gas at 280 degrees Celsius. Uh, and it goes all over the place. Look at it. It's insulating my dirt. Uh-oh. Well, it's about to reach its vapor point. So let's see what happens. Phosphorus gas. Oh my gosh, look at phosphorus gas. I've destroyed my test. Um. Okay. Well, this is crazy, but maybe there will be something good that comes out of it. 
oh, there is something really good that's come out of this. Check this out. So the specific heat capacity of hydrogen is 2.4. So it has a pretty decent you know, capacity. Its thermal conductivity is 0.168. If we check out phosphorus in its gas, in its gas state here, it has less specific heat capacity, so it's 0.7, but its thermal conductivity is 0.2. So it's got, you know, less than half specific heat capacity, so it takes less energy to warm up, so it's better at changing temperatures, and it's twice as conductive, so it will transfer energy from the magma to whatever you have in here faster. How about that? So having this inside of here, eh, I don't know, may not be the worst thing in the world. I would say you probably wouldn't want to have a lot in here though. I think if you were to try to do this and do this successfully, you would want to have your, your phosphorus in a, a different chamber over here so that when it goes into a liquid state, it doesn't like spread all over the place because that's causing some problems. So I'm just gonna mop this up Boop, real quick and just get rid of the extra liquid there. But boom, I like it. There's something to it. I wasn't expecting that at all. All right, so getting back to the the dirt here. This temperature is starting to go back up. If I deconstruct this real quick, because I want to, I want to, I would like to have some of that phosphorus gas make its way over here and kind of help the conductivity of this. I, it seems like it's going all over the place. So, no, it is phosphorus. Okay, great. Excellent. And it's turned that dirt into sand. Boom. So there you have it. That's how you can make some sand. Now, let's talk about what other things we can actually put inside of here. If I take algae, that might be one option. The other thing that I like to see here is polluted dirt or a rot pile. Those are both good options. Now, if you just dig up this sand, you can see that, well, you get a little sand pile. Boop, just like that. However, it will be half as much because, you know, it's, it's, it's the digging function that gets rid of some of that. Okay, so I moved. <laughs> I guess I had a lot of polluted dirt. 553 kilograms. Now, remember, where do we have lots and lots of polluted dirt? Boom, right up here. Lots of polluted dirt. Slime, slime is another option. Let's click that one. Uh-oh. <laughs> How did I end up with dirt here? Mima must have been holding something and then went idle in the wrong spot. Ah, crap. There's there's a little bit of a hiccup there. Ooh, and it turned everything into steam because it pushed the liquid out of its place. Oh, you know what it was? When Mima moved through that spot, right there, it absorbed the temperature from the naphtha. Okay, so let me explain what the problem was right there. I had a large volume of the naphtha right there, and that was had a lot of thermal capacity. What I was moving into this space was only about a thousand grams, because what is selected here for its organic is a you know a little rot pile or a little bit of slime, and neither of those are going to turn into dirt and eventually sand. So it was a very small volume that was for a limited amount of time exposed to something very, very hot. So what I've done here is I've dropped this down to 500 grams and what would be a good idea is to store that stuff up in a storage compactor, maybe like on the side here. So you get a large, you know, a, you know, a kilograms worth before you actually go and move them in there. That way, when you move them in there, they don't turn into dirt in the one lock spot that you need right there. And this, you do need this liquid here in order to keep this vacuum. <laughs> and as these storage compactors are giving off dirt, well, you can see here they become entombed. You will have to do some digging every now and then. And it would be a good idea to fill up your storage compactor with, in this case, like this one over here, 500 kilograms. So that 
you don't constantly have to keep running into this space. Okay, so another thing I noticed is that the phosphorus gas, when it comes in contact with this colder polluted dirt here, it will liquefy right where the storage compactor is, and that kind of creates a little bit of a, an isolation for whatever that polluted dirt is. Or the, the temperatures, I guess, there. It, it, it will insulate it. Um, so it's ha a good idea would to have be to have a mesh tile below that. So if it does liquefy, at least that liquid goes back down here to the bottom. Okay, so what I'm observing here is with uh, over 2,000 kilograms of dirt or polluted dirt in the same tile, it's taking a while for this to actually uh, heat up fast enough to uh, to turn into sand. So I think a couple of things you could do here is maybe spread this out so that I have, you know, polluted dirt over here. And then its temperature will go up a little bit faster because it's exposed to more gas and things are moving around a little bit more. The other thing is also, maybe if you're going to set this up, you might try to do it in bulk batches, right? So, yeah, you deliver a bunch of magma, and then you don't really worry about it for a while and just let things heat up over time so that you don't have to keep running in and out of here every single cycle. So there might be a whole rhythm to it. But as we can see here, and I've showed several times, this is the method how pretty much anything that's organic um, and then the things that are in agriculture, at least fertilizer, can be heated up to the point where they can convert into sand. Phosphorite is an interesting little thing right there because it's a gas and it's got some thermal properties that I think are really interesting. But at the end of the day, it's cool to see that this is actually possible now. So now we have a way of creating more sand from fertilizer, which is I think the primary source there. So you can actually turn polluted water into energy and eventually sand, which is really, really useful. So. Hopefully you guys found this video somewhat informative or helpful. Let me know down there in the comment section below. If you also got some crazy ideas for heating things up, uh, for refining metals, that would be a really cool idea. I think there are some people that have come up with some crazy like electric furnaces to, to really cook things down and make tungsten and whatnot. So I'd, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Hopefully you found this video somewhat uh, enjoyable. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Have a great day, guys. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar out. So one thing I never do on these sort of videos here is talk about any sort of affiliated product, but I'm exploring some options here. So one of the things that I'd like to introduce to you is We Are Legion, We Are Bob. It's an audiobook that I've been listening to here on audible.com. I noticed a lot of you guys commented back about Dark Matter, which is a series on Netflix that I enjoyed. So I have also enjoyed this video here and I bought it myself here on January 7th, 2017, a while back. It's part of a three book series and so far I'm on book two. I'm not sure if it ends at three or not, but this is one of the books that I would recommend if you have not really explored any sort of audiobooks, and I think it has a lot of similarities here to Oxygen Not Included, therefore that's why I'm recommending it. Uh, this is a uh, links down there in the description below help support my channel. Not that I really need your support as of right now, but like I said, I'm exploring some options um, as far as potential avenues to make revenue on this channel. Hence, therefore, get more serious with YouTube. If you're not already signed up for Audible, they are actually giving you a promotion, which is a 30-day free trial of Audible with two free books. So you can actually get into this for free and try it out and see if you actually like it or not. So that's a pretty good deal. I did it with one free book a while ago, and now they're giving you two free books. So that's a pretty good deal. I know this was a little bit weird, but thanks for your time and hear me out.